Every single day we get multiple calls from individuals who have long-term disability policies that are governed by ERISA. Now we've spoken a lot on this website and multiple videos about ERISA and ERISA stands for the Employee Retirement Income Security Act but we wanted to highlight in this video a couple different reasons why we think ERISA is such an unfair law for disability claimants. So I'm joined today by attorney Steve Jessup and together we've handled hundreds of ERISA appeals for claimants all around the country and I guess Steve you can start by what's in your opinion the probably the number one reason why you think ERISA is an unfair law. Well it's, it's pretty hard just to limit it to one specific since there's so many. Um, I feel probably the, the fact that makes it so unfair is to, the standard of review in the case that you have to actually file a lawsuit um, the base standard review is what they call arbitrary and capricious or whether or not the insurance company had a reasonable basis to deny the claim. And unfortunately, the way a lot of these policies are written, even though the law is changing, um, the insurance company is given the, the luxury of being able to interpret the policy as they see fit. Uh, so quite often what can happen is, is uh, they have a doctor that they hired who says, no, I think this person uh, you know, doesn't have restrictions and limitations that would prevent them from working. Next thing you know, they, they deny the claim. Um, you can try to appeal, but at the end of the day, if you have to go into litigation, the judge isn't going to start off by trying to determine whether or not he thinks you're disabled. He wants to see if the insurance company acted reasonable in denying the claim. So that's when the policy has a discretionary clause, which essentially says that the company has the opportunity to make the decision and administer the claim. Mm -hmm. And I think we just, I know we just posted a, a blog entry recently about a bill that's pending in California right now on Arnold Schwarzenegger's desk to have him approve a law that would not allow for insurance companies to have discretionary clauses in policies, which would probably make the, that would give the judge the opportunity to review the claim on his own and make a decision whether or not he thinks the person is disabled. Um, I think the second or another reason the, that ERISA is an unfair law is the fact that you have to go through this administrative process before you can file an appeal. And what that means is that once your claim is denied, you absolutely have to file an appeal within 180 days, otherwise you can't file a lawsuit. Another way to look at it is once your claim is denied, you can't just say, screw you insurance company, I'm going to file a lawsuit. Whereas if you had an individual disability policy, you have the opportunity to do that. So I think that's a significant disadvantage because when you're a long-term disability claimant, your claim gets denied and you don't have any resources, no money coming in, especially from the disability carrier, and now you got to appeal to the company and then they have 45 days plus two more 45 days extensions if they want, you got to wait for them before you can even go to the court. And then when you get to the court, it's usually, you know, nine months to a year and a half because you're stuck in federal court on ERISA claim. What's another reason that you think ERISA is unfair? I think one of the other big reasons is, is after your claim has been denied on appeal and you have no more administrative remedies and you're looking to file the lawsuit, um, like we've discussed in other videos, it's very, very very, very hard, well, almost, almost impossible to get any new information. And so in, in preparing your appeal and submitting it, if you don't put in the additional information that would help uh, strengthen the claim, doctor's reports, uh, you know, letters of support, whatever the case may be, you don't have the chance then to go back and try to get that in. So when you said a judge may not get it, you may not have your trial until about a year out, there's a whole year of stuff that could have happened. I know we've said before, you could get hit by a car three weeks after, but the judge can't take that into consideration because all he can look at is that snippet in time from when you filed the claim to the final denial came. So that's that's another reason. It's, it's just such a weird you know, scope that has right. to be reviewed. I mean, under ERISA, that appeal is your trial because if you don't get it into the administrative record, basically you're not going to have another opportunity to get any more rec any more information to the judge. There are some exceptions under the law, but they're very rarely ever granted where you can get additional information. And even going as far as if you get denied, you go through your appeal, and then three weeks later you have surgery, there's almost no way that the judge is even going to know about that because the administrative record is sealed. Um, I think probably one of the most offensive things about ERISA is the fact that you basically have, there's no penalties for the conduct of the disability insurance company if they deny your claim. For example, there's no bad faith and there's no punitive damages, whereas if you had an individual claim and the disability insurance company acts egregiously or recklessly or, or completely wrong in denying your claim, you may have extra contractual remedies. In this case, with an, ERISA, with an ERISA claim, your best case alternative, if you win the case, is number one, you get your benefits back, and number two, you might get some interest from the court, 
you may get some costs, and lastly, you may have your attorney's fees, which is completely discretionary with the court. Now, we talked about attorney's fees recently, and I wrote a, another blog entry just recently on this Hart case where the standard, of, the standard of review for attorney's fees was changed slightly, and it may become more lax for claimants to get attorney's fees if they prevail, but that's still to be determined. But there's no consequences for the disability insurance company. So if they deny a claim, yeah, they got to pay the other side's attorney's fees if they lose, maybe some interest, which is usually very low, but there's not going to be a $100,000 or a multi-million dollar award for their conduct. So basically, they can get away with whatever they want to do with no with no implications. Um, what else do you think about ERISA that's unfair? Uh, I think even the style of the trial, when you do get to trial, there's no juries. It's, it goes straight into federal court and judge, he's going to review it. Uh, no testimony is going to be taken. They won't hear from your doctors. They won't hear from you. Uh, and in some cases, the judge can even just rely upon the trial briefs that are filed by the attorneys in, in trying to in render opinions. So you don't, I guess, get that feeling of your day in court that, you know, the movies or TV shows like to make it out where people are going to hear your case and they're going to understand. That's, that's just unfortunately not available to you under ERISA. Right. And I think that's why, again, you got to put in a lot of testimony or witness statements or whatever you want in that administrative record. I mean, how many people have called us where they didn't have any outside testimony? They didn't put in their own statements, not even from their significant other, closest friends, coworkers or anything. And basically then our hands are tied and it's very hard for us to help them in those situations. That's true, because in the denial letter it says you have 180 days to file an appeal. Uh, they don't tell you the gravity of what that appeal means, they just tell you, and we'll get calls from people who say, well, I, I already appealed it um, you know, a week after, and they denied it again. Well, in that appeal, I see the appeal that they submit, and it says, I'm appealing your decision, I think you're wrong, here are my new records. You know, so they're not taking the opportunity to really, really, you know, put in that information necessary for later on, possibly in litigation. Right, and much like you said that you don't have your day in court, there's no jury trial, no testimony from the claimant, there's also the situation where when you submit an appeal to the carrier and then the um, appeal comes back and you get this final denial, usually during your last appeal, they'll have another doctor review the claim or they'll do an IME exam of you and get the results, and then you end up getting the claim denial back and there's no more appeals for you, there's nothing else you can do as a claimant, you never have the opportunity to even file a response to that review by the insurance company or the review by the independent medical exam doctor, or you don't have the opportunity for your doctor to comment on what the independent medical exam doctor did. So the insurance company gets the last word every single time and you're left holding the bag and then the case goes to court and the judge says, well, I see what the insurance company did, I think they may have acted reasonably Therefore, there's no way I can reverse your claim. So, you know, this is a major problem. There's a lot of federal legislators that are aware of that. We've spoken to several. We've had meetings in Washington with several legislators trying to get these laws changed. And we're going to, we're going to continue to fight every day to get these laws changed so that ERISA can become fair for claimants around the country. Again, if you have an ERISA-based claim, which is usually a policy that you receive from your employer, feel free to give us a call and we'd be happy to discuss your claim with you.